Okay, so today we're going to discuss all about the bladelet structure and uh, we have also here the function, especially for the um, how it's right involved here in the coagulation process or the clotting process. So again, we consider here the platelets. Again, other name of your platelets, we have your thrombocyte or your thromboplastids. Okay, so this is anucleated, mean to say that one do not have a nucleus. And this is the cytoplasmic fragments of your cytoplasmic fragments of your megakaryocytes. Okay, this one would have the irregular incise and could assume here circular or other shape. And uh, usually in the peripheral blood smear, platelets appear to be like uh, it's granular and we'll have here different shapes. Okay, so the normal diameter of the platelet is 2 to 3 micrometer in diameter that would have here 2.5 micrometer in diameter average. Then we have the normal values, that's 150 to 400,000. Then we have here the mean, um, mean, uh, M, M, C, we mean corpuscular volume of your platelets. We have here 5 to 8 FL. Then we have your MPV, your mean platelet volume, that's 8 to 10 FL. And we have here the platelet distribution width. The platelet distribution width here, uh, that pertains as well, just like the equivalent to your RDW or your red cell distribution width. So when we speak about the red cell distribution width or even your platelet distribution width, so that pertains here to the changes in the size. So we measure here on the, the degree of the change in the size, just like your plate, just like just like your red cell distribution width. So your instrument, automated instrument, would be able to classify your platelets if that particle here would have a platelet distribution width of 2 to 25 fm. Then we have also here your automated instrument would try to produce here a graph or you call this one a histogram. And most likely your platelets try to be concentrated on having that right skewed so that's the right shift to the right, something like that. To the right, so pag bell shape, di ba ganyan? So shoot to the right. And we'd have here, the graph also try to represent also here a single peak. So isang ganun lang, pataas lang na peak. Wala siya pa ganun ganun. So right skewed single peak. Okay, then we have also here the... Okay, then we have here your platelets. So your circulating platelets. Pag sinabi circulating platelets, we're talking about your platelets in your peripheral circulation. We try to assume here a biconvex shape. But uh, if you try to collect the blood and put that one in your eta tube, it would appear to be around circular oval na shape. Then um, if you try to make a smear, and try to stain your blood smear, peripheral smear with the right stain, your platelets appear to be circular, irregular, and most likely that one is granular. Okay, so within our blood vessels, okay, so when we blood vessel, tayo, your platelets, and along with your RBC, they're found here at the center of your blood vessel. Your WBC, most likely, they try to be concentrated here, dito sa site. Okay, they try to adhere. So, they are marginating, most likely, within your blood vessel wall. But unlike your w, unlike your RBC in platelets, so most likely, they are found here at the center, within your blood vessel, to try to flow within that one. Okay, another one, your WBC in your platelets, would able to, as your blood enter your spleen, for example, your platelets and your WBC would able to enter in and out also of the white pulp of your spleen. Whereas your IBC, on the other hand, hindi, hindi mo siya makikita sa white, white pulp of your spleen because most likely nasa red pulp ang ating IBC. Okay, then we have also here parts of your platelets. So we have the term chromomer. So the chromomer most likely assumed here or constitutes 
the part of your platelets that is the central portion and that one usually granular. And the part here that try to surround your chromomere, you call it one your hyalomer, and that one is a granular, and um, that one is light blue, if uh, that one has been stained by your right stain. Okay, now we go to the platelet count. So again, the normal values to the platelet count is 150 to 400,000, but as we try to grow older here, especially when we try to reach here the uh, more than 65 years old, so the platelet count here try to decrease for the meals. So from the usual 150 to 400, it will be decreased here to 122 to 350,000. For the female, on the other hand, it will be decreased here to 140 to 379,000. So if your patient, for example, here are those at that age, so interpretation would be correlated with the age of the patient. So sometimes here, of course, there since they are all years so bumababang kan lang platelet, could not be mistaken here as thrombocytopenia or mababa na platelets because, of course, that one is associated with their age. Okay, so when you're doing your platelet count, actually what is being counted or whatever your platelet count that represent only here the two-thirds of the total platelet uh, population. Okay, and the, because the one-third of your platelet has been sequestered in your spleen. So, nakatago ang one-third na population sa spleen natin. Okay, that's why, uh, so again, just like your WBC, again, WBC is just represent here the 50% of your population na sa peripheral circulation natin. And then again, the platelet count here, what's in the peripheral circulation, or I mean to say what is being um, the platelet count the patient after the blood extraction, after doing the test, that represents only here the two-thirds of the entire population of the platelets of the patient in his body. Because again, the one third of the platelets of that patient, or that patient, or are or us, one third of us, um, the platelets of us here are actually uh, sequestered or being stored in the spleen. So if you try to remove the spleen by the process of the splenectomy, so expect of here it will increase your platelet counts because of course that will be released all of that in your peripheral circulation. Okay, then we have here the term stress platelets. So stress platelets, other name for that is your reticulated platelets. So this is a platelet that is uh, prematurely released from your megakaryocyte going to your peripheral circulation because of the demand of the platelet in your peripheral circulation. Okay, so prematurely released means to say hindi pa dapat siya release to your peripheral circulation, pero you try to force the platelet to be released in your peripheral circulation because of the demand in the thrombocytopenia in your peripheral circulation. I mean to say the patient is suffering here with a thrombocytopenia or mababa, a platelet's the patient's a peripheral circulation. So that's why it needs to be replenished here, and therefore it try to it triggered or activates here the release of the platelets from your megakaryocytes to be released in your peripheral circulation to correct for that thrombocytopenia para mag-normal ang platelet ni patient. And since parang pinilit lang sila, okay, they become here your stress platelets or reticulated platelets. So your stress platelets appears to be much larger compared with the usual na platelets. Because notice here the diameter Again, the normal diameter lang natin is nasa 2.5 micrometer diameter, but your stress platelet could go as big as more than 6 micrometer in diameter. And we have also here the mean platelet volume. Again, the mean platelet volume is 8 to 10 FL lang, but here in the stress platelet, it could, it could go as big here as, or as high here as 12 to 14 FL, which is much bigger with the usual na platelets natin. Okay, your stress platelets is identified here by having the chrome, having the ribosomes. It would carry here the free ribosomes on its surface and the fragments of your graph endoplasmic reticulum. Kitang kita siya because again, uh, this is prematurely released. Identification of your stress platelets could be done here by your um, RNA stain or the nucleotide stain in the form of your thiazole orange. Because this is 
since makikita mo itong mga meron pa siyang RER and ribosome, so it could be stained here by your thiosyl arch. However, if you wanted to count, for example, the presence, if you wanted to quantity, the presence of your okay, of your stress platelets in your peripheral circulation, um, it might affects here or being interfered here by the presence of the dense granules of the platelets. So, that would have your interference. Hindi siya magiging ganun ka-accurate as a reflection of your true na, na stress platelets because even the usual, the normal platelets, since they have a dense granules, it might react to your thiosyl orange. Okay, the presence of high concentration of your stress platelets in your peripheral circulation because there are bigger na mga platelets, would have the tendency here to become thrombus formation. So, since malalaki sila, madami sila, so it would have here the thrombotic tendency. Hindi, hindi rin siya okay. And eventually, it would increase here the risk for your cardiovascular disease because they try to plug here within your blood vessels. Okay, the next one, we have here the ultrastructure of the platelets. So, these are the basic parts of your platelets. The first one, we have here your plasma membrane. So, the plasma membrane is like the normal na cell membrane ng lahat ng cells natin. It's made up of your phospholipids. Plus, meron siyang naka-embed na, meron siyang proteins. So, sa basic, uh, again, lahat naman ng cell membrane natin, regardless if this one's platelets or other blood cells in our body, then the plasma membrane is always made up of the phospholipids plus our proteins. Talking about, the talking about the lipid component here, so the lipid component is made up of the phospholipids plus may naka-embed within the phospholipids. So like for example, um, di ba ito yung, okay, this is your polar head and polar tail, so ganyan siya, by layer ang ating phospholipids. So if you try to represent here, ito ang phospholipids na, then dito sa gitna niya, may naka may makakita ka dito na cholesterol. So, it's a phospholipid by layer with embedded na cholesterol here. That's how you describe the plasma membrane or the lipid component of your plasma membrane of your platelets. Okay, so we divide here the lipid component of your um, cell membrane of the platelets into the inner membrane. And we have also here the plasma membrane layer. Okay, the plasma membrane layer here is made of phosphatidyl uh, choline and your sphingomyelin. And for the inner membrane, it's basically made up of three uh, phospholipids. We have here phosphatidyl inositol, phosphatidyl serine, and then another one we have here your phosphatidyl ethanol. Okay, so we have here the two most important phospholipids. And they are both found here in the inner membrane layer. The first one, we have here phosphatidyl inositol. So, phosphatidyl inositol here, again, this is a substrate for your eicosanoid pathway. We have discussed already the eicosanoid pathway, di ba? So, let's to start with the phosphatidyl inositol, converting that one to your arachidonic acid, to your prostaglandin, then you have your thromboxane A2, pinaka-product natin, which activates your platelets. So, again, phosphatidinositol help here provides a needed na substrate for the platelet activation through your eicosanoid pathway or your, your cyclooxygenase pathway. Well, that's what we have discussed in our first topic. Another phospholipids here, which is very important, is also your phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine, Okay, this is a phospholipid here that try to flip to the outer surface during the platelet activation. What do you mean by flipping to the outer surface? Ito ay, pag nag-activate ang platelets natin, lumalabas ito, parang nag-swing siya para lumabas sa platelet membrane natin. Pag lumabas na siya sa platelet membrane natin, so like for example ito, kung dito ito ang phosphatidyoserine, lumalabas ito dito. You try to flip here, during the platelet activation. Pag nag-flip siya sa outer surface, ito po sa patidisiling, ginagamit siya as a receptor para makapag-bind ang ating mga coagulation factor complex. Like what? 
We have here factor 8 complex, factor 10, 5 complex. So, pag nag-bind nito mga coagulation factors, it will eventually activate your coagulation cascade of reactions. So, again, phosphatidyl inositol, this is needed here for the platelet activation. Yung phosphatidyl serine naman is needed for your coagulation factor activations. By serving here as the receptor, para makapag-bind ng ating mga coagulation complex, like your factor 8 and your factor 10 and factor 10, 5 complex. Okay, now we have here also, aside from your lipids, specifically the uh, phospholipids found in the plasma membrane, what is also present here in the plasma membrane would be the protein component, or, or you call it was your glycocale. The protein component of the plasma membrane but the glycocalyx profile here is primarily made up of your glycoprotein and could also be your proteoglycans. Speaking about your glycoprotein, it's a transmembrane, a protein. Pag sinabing transmembrane, so yan, lumalabas din siya from the transmembrane. One side of your glycoprotein ay nasa labas, the other side is nasa loob. The one end na nasa labas, ginagamit ito, as a receptor para mag-bind ng ating mga ligand or tinatawag na agonist. Your ligand sa agonist here are actually substances, chemical substances that will activate your platelets. So, yun ang function ni glycoprotein. Again, one end of that is on the outer surface serving here as the receptor membrane for your ligand or your agonist. Again, your ligand and agonist here are chemical substances which will activate your platelets. How about the other end of that? The other end of your glycoprotein ay nakakonect siya sa ating cytoskeleton. Okay, so your cytoskeleton here would help primarily para mag-contract ang ating, okay, ang ating uh, platelets para i-release niya ang content ng granules ng ating platelets. Well, the other end of your glycoprotein is extended here. It's being connected to your cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton helps your platelet uh, activation by contraction. And then that would allow the platelet granules to release the content of its granules. Para mag-activate ang ating platelets. Okay, then we have here the main function of your plasma membrane since ito ay nasa outer layer. It tries to absorb the substances from the environment by the process of the endocytosis para higupin niya para pumasok sa loob ni platelets natin. Again, this, those, there are some substances here wherein they are not uh, given by the megakaryocyte. What do you mean by that one? Diba? Remember that your platelets ay galing siya kay megakaryocytes. May mga substance na content ng granules ni platelets na hindi sila galing kay megakaryocyte. So saan sila galing? Ito yung mga substance na kinakain o ina endocytos ni platelets natin. Pag kinain niya by the process of the endocytosis, those substances absorbed here will go to the storage granules or we're talking about magiging part sila ng component ng granules ni platelets. So, this is the main function of your plasma member here to absorb the substances from the environment by the process of the endocytosis. And that would eventually be stored on the storage granules. Pupunta sila sa granules ni platelets.